This is our 50 of poems, and I'm again going to just read one poem. And it's a very iconic poem of American history. It's by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow and is The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. This version is put out by the National Geographic Society and is illustrated by Jeffrey Thompson. The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. This is an actual uh, building in Boston. It's called the Old North Church. And here is our tale. Listen, my children, and you will hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. On the 18th of April in 75, hardly a man is now alive who remembers that famous day and year. He said to his friend, if the British march by land or sea from town tonight, hang a lantern aloft in the belfry arch of the Old North Church Tower as a signal light. One if by land, two if by sea, and I on the opposite shore will be, ready to spread, ride and spread the alarm through every Middlesex village and farm for the country folk to be up and to arm. Then he said good night and with muffled oar silently roared to the Charleston shore. Just as the moon rose over the bay, where swinging wide at her moorings lay the Somerset British man of war, a phantom ship with each mast and spar across the moon like a prison bar and a huge black hulk that was magnified by its own reflection in the tide. And there's Paul rowing in a rowboat to the other side. Meanwhile, his friend through alley and street wanders and watches with eager ears, ears till in the silence around him he hears the muster of men at the barrack door, the sound of arms and the tramp of feet, and the measured tread of grenadiers marching down to their boats on the shore. Then he climbed the tower of the Old North Church by the wooden stairs with stealthy tread to the belfry chamber overhead and startled the pigeons from their perch on the somber rafters that round him made, masses and moving shapes of shade, by the trembling ladder, steep and tall, to the highest window in the wall. Then he pauses to listen and look down at a moment on the roofs of the town and the moonlight flowing over all. And there he is climbing the steps. Beneath in the churchyard lay, yard lay the dead in their night encampment on the hill. Wrapped in silence so deep and still, that he could hear the sentinel's tread, the watchful night wind as it went, creeping along from tent to tent, to seem to whisper, all is well. A moment only he feels the spell of the place and the hour and the secret dread of the lone belfry tower and the dead. For suddenly all his thoughts are bent on a shadowy somewhere thing far away. When the river widens to meet the bay, a line of black that bends and floats on the rising tide like a bridge of boats. Meanwhile, impatient to mount and ride, booted and spurred with a heavy stride, on the opposite shore walked Paul Revere. Now he patted his horse's side, now gazed at the landscape far and near, then impetuous stamped the earth and turned and tightened his saddle girth. But mostly he watches with eager search the belfry tower of the old North Church as it rose above the graves on the hill, lonely and spectral, somber and still. And lo, he looks on the belfry height, a glimmer and then a gleam of light. He springs to the saddle, the bridle he turns, but lingers and gaze till full in his sight. <gasps> a second light in the light in the belfry burns. A hurry of hoofs in a village street, a shape in the moonlight, a bulk in the dark, and beneath from the pebbles in passing a spark, struck out by the steed flying fearless and fleet. That was all, and yet, through the groom and the light, the fate of a nation was riding that night, and the spark struck out by that steed in its flight, kindled the lamb into the flame with its heat. As he left the village and mounted the steep, and beneath him tranquil, broad and deep, is the mystic meeting the ocean tides, 
and under the alders the skirts its edge now soft in the sand now loud on the ledge is heard the tramp of his steed as he rides it's twelve by the village clock when he crossed the bridge into medford town he hear, heard the crowing of the cock, cro, cock and the barking of the farmer's dog and felt the damp of the river fog that rises after the sun goes down. It was at one by the village clock when he galloped into Lexington. He saw the gilded weathercock swim in the moonlight as he passed, and the meeting houses, blank and bare, gazed at him with spectral glare as if they stood already aghast at the bloody work they would look work they would look upon it was two by the village clock when he came to the bridge in concord town he heard the bleating of the flock and the twittering of birds among the trees and felt the breath of the morning breeze blowing over the meadows brown and one was sleep, safe and asleep in his bed who at the bridge would first be first to fall who that day would be lying dead, pierced by a British musket ball. You know the rest in the books you have read, how the British regulars fired and fled, how the farmers gave them ball for ball from behind each fence and farmyard wall, chasing the redcoats down the lane, then crossing the fields to emerge again under the trees at the turn of the road and only pausing to fire and load. So through the night rode Paul Revere, and so through the night went his cry of alarm to every Middlesex village and farm, a cry of defiance and not of fear, a voice in the darkness, a knock at the door, and a word that still shall echo forevermore. For born on the night wind of the past, through all our history to the last, in the hour of darkness and peril and need, the people will waken and listen to hear the hurrying hoofbeats of that steed in the midnight message of Paul Revere. So, Paul Revere was one of two or three men who went riding that night. Paul was actually captured later on. But because he rode very fast through the countryside, he would yell, The British are coming! The British are coming! And people needed to wake up and get ready to fight the British. For a long time, before America became America, we were ruled by the British colonies. And we said, we don't want to be ruled by a king. We want to have our own form of government elected by the people. So we have a democratic republic, and we get to vote who we want to have in our office. And this is part of our history of how everyday people fought to have their own kind of country when they were being ruled in a way that wasn't so kind. The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere.